Of course, with this being the first race of the regular season here at Port Royal Speedway, there's a lot of important people that make racing at Port Royal Speedway possible. And from when we last raced in the 2023 regular season, we have lost a few of those members of our community since then to now. Of course, many of you may have noticed on social media have heard elsewhere, Jim Klein of JNS Classics. He's always been a big supporter and sponsor here at Port Royal Speedway and in dirt track racing in general, and we lost him this off season. We also lost Gary Weichel, a longtime supporter, season ticket holder here at Port Royal Speedway, worked on the track crew, and was also a key part of many sprint car racing teams that raced here at Port Royal Speedway. And Tom Briner as well, another fan and longtime supporter of Port Royal Speedway, we lost this off season. So at this time for Tom Briner, Gary Weichel, and Jim Klein, we'd like to observe a moment of silence. Thank you. And now we'll move into today's invocation, which will be presented by Mr. Pete Wilson. <clears throat> Let me first say that uh, I've been coming to Port Royal Speedway for a long time. This makes my 68th year. I've been coming to the Port Royal. I've been here almost every Saturday night. And uh, I love the racing. But what we have to look forward to, and I noticed this track is over the last 68 years has really been a lot of changes. Some of the people I think that should be recognized, and I wish every one of you would uh, let them know that, is the people that, um, gentlemen standing next to me, Brad Strasser, uh, he, he's the voice of Port Royal Speedway. He is the, the un individual that, um, that inspires every one of us to do the best things for the, this track. I met several years ago a man, man by the name of Don Clark, the president of the Sport, for Port Royal Speedway. His wife Brenda is here yet tonight, who's working with us. Don has passed away some several years ago. I met him out there and I said, Don, could I have a few minutes of your time? He said, yeah, go ahead. He said, I said, um, I'd marry you for something. He said, what do you marry me for? I said, you do something that most people don't do. He said, well, what do I do? I said, you allow the cars to come out on the track and warm up, but you won't allow them to race until you say the prayer. He said, I'm going to tell you something, Pete. That's the way it's going to be. As long as I'm the president of this speedway, that's the way it's going to be. I said, there's the reason I'd marry you. You put Jesus first in your life. Along with that, we have the best promoter, I think, in the country, Steve O'Neill. I think we ought to recognize these gentlemen and the board members here that support these men. Um, give, them, give them all the support that you can give them. I'm going to pray for you here tonight, each, every, each and every one of you. I'm going to pay for the, the drivers, the pit crew, and the spectators, and, and everybody, every one of the, the track officials and the people that make this all ha happen. Lord, you've given us a, the best place that I know of for our racing uh, here in this country. Port Royal Speedway, in my eyes, is the best track to go to. And you've directed me here for all those years. I'm now asking each and every one of them if they have something wrong with them. Go to the Lord. A year, almost two years ago, in July, it'll be two years, I was at Port Royal Speedway enjoying this track and the racing. I went home that night, went to bed, and got up the next morning. I told my wife, I, said, I can't go to church today. I got a pain in my back over to my, from the middle of my back over to my right shoulder and down my chest. She right away called the ambulance. They took me to Penn, uh, Mount Nittany Hospital in State College, life flighted me over to Danville. The surgeon came in and said, Mr. Wilson, you're, you're in a very serious situation. You have a leaking aorta. That's the main artery that goes into your heart. He said, 
you're not going to live very long if I don't do surgery. I'll be back in this afternoon to do the surgery for you. He came back in that afternoon and said, Mr. Wilson, he said, what did you do in the time I left? I said, I'm in intensive care. I can't do much of anything. I'm laying here in bed. He said, no, you did something. I said, yes, I prayed to Jesus. I asked him, I said, Jesus, you healed people 2,000 years ago just by touching them. Would you put your hand upon me and heal me? He said, well, I'm not going to operate on you. I said, who is? No one. You had a miracle. You're healed. I said, what's next? He said, what's next is I'm going to call your wife or tell her to come get you. You're not even going to stay overnight. You know, that's having faith, people. Faith in the Lord to, to do the right thing. And I think with the people that we have here running the Speedway right now, I don't know what their backgrounds are, most of them are, but if you put everything in Jesus' hands, he'll take care of you and everybody else. Ask Jesus to pray uh, to heal each one of you. Anybody there tonight, you need prayer for me, prayer? Ask him back to the office. I'll be more than happy to pray for you. And uh, we ask us in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. And singing tonight's national anthem, Mr. Lou Lloyd. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave for the land of the free and the home of the brave. All right. Thank you, Luke. So with that, we'll get ready to get rolling into today's heat races. Getting ready for 410 heat race number one. On the pole, car number 23, that is Devin Borden. Driver out of Raymond, Washington. In the Traco Industrial Mountain Ridge Metals, J.R. Benegro Halling, car number 23. Alongside Borden, your second starter, car number one, that is Chase Dietz, driver out of York in the Zemco headers, Zemco Speed Equipment, custom metal coatings, number one. Inside row two, starting third, that is Gerard McIntyre, driver out of New Oxford. In the Weaver's Body Shop, Gridiron Pizza, BDI, the auction guy, car number 33, Gerard McIntyre, Jr. Alongside him, your fourth starter, Car number 27, that's Emerson Axum, driver out of Franklin, Indiana. In the Capital Industries, WCI KPM, car number 27, Emerson Axum. 
Inside row three, starting fifth, car number 17, that is Dylan Norris, driver out of Hanover. In the Dynatech controls, fillpools.com, SCC trucking, number 17 of Dylan Norris. Alongside him, your sixth starter, that's a 47K of Cody Lehman, driver out of Enola. In the Bruner Service Center Advanced Tooling Solutions, Bruce's Speed Shop, RV four-wheel drive, car number 47K. Inside row four, starting seventh, that's a 12J of Tyler Esch, driver out of New Providence. In the Bungo's Tires and Service DMI TNN Enterprises, car number 12J. Alongside him, your eighth starter. Car number 99, that is Devin Adams, driver out of Lebanon. In the Adams Auto Sales, Fredericksburg Eagle Hotel, Blue Rock Farms, car number 99, Devin Adams. Eight car starting lineup for heat race number one. So the one-up sign given to the field. We'll go green eight laps the distance here on White Livestock, heat race number one. Green flag is out and a good start for Chase Dietz in his first appearance in the Zemco number one. Devin Borden, he positions him in that, himself in that second spot. And Gerard McIntyre, right now, your top three cars. There's Emerson Axum in the 27. His first appearance in a wing 410 here at Port Royal Speedway as we've got a battle for fifth behind him between Cody Lehman and Dylan Norris in that 17. Lehman able to dispatch of Norris there through the back stretch in third and fourth corner. Norris will look back down to the inside momentarily, makes up some good ground on the 47K of Cody Lehman. Right now your leader is the one of Chase Dietz. He's opened up to a 2.3 second lead. This is his first time in the Zemco Speed Equipment number one, not just in 2024 Port Royal Speedway, in 2024 at all. And he is looking more than comfortable in that ride right now. There behind him, that's the 23 of Devin Borden. Five wins in 410 competition in 2023. Made him the track champion. He's sitting in second. Large gap between him and Chase Dietz right now. And right behind Borden, there's the 33 of Gerard McIntyre. GMAC, he has one win in 410 competition here. That came in 2023. Top five transfer into today's A main. Emerson Axum and Cody Lehman. Right now, make up the top five. So we got just two more laps to go here in heat race number one. And on the final corner, Chase Dietz out to a 4.3 second lead. He is going to walk away with heat race number one and pick up the heat race win. Finishing second, the 23 of Devin Borden. Third, the 33 of Gerard McIntyre. Fourth, the 27 of Emerson Axum. And in fifth, coming across the line now, the 47K of Cody Lehman. So that finishes up heat race number one, picking up the win 
was the one of Chase Deeks, finishing second to 23 of Devin Borden. Third was the 33 of Gerard McIntyre. Fourth to 27 of Emerson Axum. Fifth in the final transfer spot, the 47K of Cody Lehman. Sixth to 17 of Dylan Norris. Seventh to 99 of Devin Adams. And in eighth, the 12J of Tyler Esch. So heat race number two is making their way to the front stretch here now, lining up on the pole for heat race number two from Clovis, California. In the Sander Engineering, driven to save lives, four seas construction, Durst number 14, it's the high roller of Corey Day. Starting second, the driver comes from Newtown, PA, in the Thompson Motor Service, IGA of Middleburg, Pat Pletcher, CPA, Fire and Safety Services, car number 11T, it's Mike Thompson. Starting third out of Middleburg in the Wise Market, Sage Fruit 35K, it is Jake Carklin. And rolling off fourth from Asper's PA in the Racers New and Used Auto Parts Warehouse, Snell Baker's Electric, Rack Daddy's RJ Bargain Outlet, car number eight, it is Billy Dietrich. Inside row number three from Port Royal here in PA. In the Valley Supply, Dryden, Juniata Concrete, SCA Incorporated. Car number five, it's Dylan Sisney. And the outside of row number three, this driver comes from Sinking Spring, PA, in the Rapid Tire, Kreitz Oval Track Products, Downs Automotive, SCA Incorporated. Car number 69X, it's Cassidy Kreitz. And starting seventh from Carlisle in the Fine Line Auto Body, Hess Bid, Keen Parts, 2B Wrap 17K, it is Kyle Keen. An eighth and final starter here for the second heat race. This driver comes from Liverpool in the Mountain View Travel, High Tech Metals, Village Square Plaza, CMB Chubby, car number 11 of TJ Stutz. The first heat race was brought to you by Ickesburg Beverage, located in sunny Perry County. It's always sunny on race day at Port Royal Speedway, and Ickesburg Beverage loves race fans and thanks them for their business. Stop by Ickesburg Beverage on your next trip to the track. Heat race number two is brought to you by Harshberger Sub and Malt, serving you at two locations in McVeigh Town and Mifflin Town. They serve great food in a 50s mood. They offer 24 flavors of homemade ice cream and great daily specials, including 50s night Wednesdays. You can like them on Facebook today. So Corey Day, the high roller with the High Limit Racing Series, visiting us here at Port Royal Speedway today, finds himself on the pole here for heat race number two. To his outside, he's got Mikey Thompson, a rookie in 410 competition this season. Two young guns make up row number one. You got Jake Carklin, Billy Dietrich, Dylan Sisney, Casty Kreitz, Kyle Keene, TJ Stutz, making up the rest of heat race number two as we go green at the chalk line in four. And the heat race is underway. Good side-by-side -side start. Corey Day, he's got the advantage into turn number one. Billy Dietrich, he's down to the inside. TJ Stutz, how about him? He started on the back row. He's up to fifth. So we head down the back, stretch the number 14 of Corey Day. is comfortable in the lead now as Stutz looks inside of Carklin. They battle for position as Billy Dietrich, he's going to look to go to the inside of Thompson here in turn number one. They're side by side through the corner, 11 on top, eight to the bottom. Thompson uses that high side momentum to pull away a bit down the back stretch. We'll go into three and four, Dietrich glued to the bottom side, pulls back alongside the 11 here, and he'll take the second spot away at the line. Just two laps in, six to go here in the second heat race. 
Corey Day, he's out to a comfortable 1.7 second lead, and that is expanding at that as Dietrich is in second. Billy Dietrich, Mike Thompson third. Jake Carklin in fourth. Dylan Sisney, he's in that fifth and final transfer spot. TJ Stutz, he started eighth. He's on the outside looking in as it stands right now in that sixth spot as Dylan Sisney looks to reel in Jake Carklin. Momentarily had him in his sights, see if he can reel him in through three and four, but Corey Day, how about it? This guy looking good right now here in the opening 410 race at Port Royal Speedway out over a two and a half second lead as it stands right now. Carklin, he's reeled in Mikey Thompson for that third spot. Their nose to tail out of turn number four. Carklin's about a lane higher. They're gonna be side by side. Carklin decides against shoving the nose in there. He'll look to dive inside the 11 here in turn number one. He's got the advantage as they come off the two, but Thompson uses that speed on the top to get the nose back in front. He'll go into three. Carklin throws it in a bit. They're gonna, he's gonna crowd him between three and four and cut the nose off. Carklin, he's moved in front of Thompson for that third spot. And Sisney, he can take advantage of that pass as well. He'll look inside the 11, move him up to the fourth spot. Thompson now, he's on the bubble, still transfers in, but in danger if TJ Stutz can mount any momentum. White flag is out on Corey Day as they come off of four. Moved by Carklin, made the advantage and has put Thompson in a tough spot because now he's battling with TJ Stutz. Corey Day, he's in turn number four. He's gonna pick up the checkered flag in heat race number two as the battle for the transfer spot continues. TJ Stutz took it away from Thompson off a of two. Thompson can't battle back off the fourth corner and TJ Stutz, he's gonna transfer in to tonight's A main. So Corey Day, how about this? I believe that's his first appearance, not just at Port Royal Speedway, but potentially in Pennsylvania. But he picks up the heat race win comfortably, three seconds over the rest of the field, picking up the heat race win, the 14 of Corey Day. Second was the eight of Billy Dietrich. Third, the 35K of Jake Carklin. Fourth, the five of Dylan Sisney. And transferring in in fifth is the 11 of TJ Stutz. Heading to the B main in sixth, the 11T of Mike Thompson, seventh, the 69X of Cassidy Kreitz, and in eighth, the 17K of Kyle Keane. Heat race number three is brought to you by Buttonwood Campground. They're located just two miles from the speedway along the Juniata River on East River Road. With over 270 tent and RV campsites, Buttonwood Campground has an atmosphere of mountains, rolling farmlands, and fresh country air to complete your camping experience. Make sure you plan your next trip to the races and camping experience around Buttonwood Campground. You can find them on the web at www.buttonwoodcamp.com. Heat race number three lines up like this. Starting on the pole from Brisbane, Australia, in the new trend home, Silk Plumbing Edge Web Design 66, it is Ryan Newton. And to his outside, out of Salfordville, in the Amana Heating and Air Conditioning, Carroll Motor Fuels, Ken's Tires Specialty Rigging, car number 51, it's Freddie Raymer. Inside row number two, he's from Prairie City, Iowa, but originally, comes from Sydney, Australia. In the Trone Outdoors, Battlefield Vodka, Hot Frog Media, Penske Racing Shocks, car number 39, it's Linton Jeffrey. And to his outside, out of Sealands Grove, in the Roast Post, Center Roofing and Contracting, Victory Auto, BK Motorsports, car number 77, it's Mike Walter. Starting third, good to have him back out of Harrisonville. In the McNagee Motorsports, John Ott Racing, GMP Distributors, Alexandra Financial Group, car number 55, it's the legend of Mike Wagner. And starting sixth, out of Pennington, New Jersey, in the Clugston Lumber Company, car number zero, it is Rick Lafferty. Starting seventh, this driver comes from Gettysburg, PA, in the Weikert's Livestock, self-made racing, York excavating, RV four-wheel drive and performance, car number 48, it's Danny Dietrich. Eighth and final starter in heat race number three. Comes from Harrisonville in the Sainer Brothers, Mac McGee Motorsports, Glenville Station, Pub and Grub, SCA Incorporated. Car number 69K, it's Logan Wagner.
One up sign shown to the field. International heat race number three. Ryan Newton from Brisbane. Linton Jeffrey from Sydney, Australia. On the insides of rows number one and two. And you got the 51 of Freddie Raymer there to the outside. It's picked up win at Williams Grove this season. Of course, that's in his other ride, the Eichelberger number eight. Family owned car 51 tonight. And of course, both Wagners, Mike and Logan, in rows three and four. Mike, his first race back after having broken his back here against the World of Outlaws last season. Good to see him back in the 55 inside row number three. Green flag is out on the third heat race. Eight laps the distance. Five move on to the feature event. Side by side into turn number one, Freddie Raymer. He's got the advantage as Newton slides up just a bit in corner number two. Linton Jeffrey back into that third spot. Danny Dietrich, look at him. He's three wide with Mike Wagner and Mike Walter heading into three, all battling for position. Linton Jeffrey, look out. You got a swarm of them behind you. Dietrich, he's on the inside. He's battling with Mike Walter for fourth. Side by side is Jeffrey with Newton. He's going to move up into that second spot. Dietrich still on the bottom. He'll get by Walter. He'll get by Newton and look inside Jeffrey momentarily. Meanwhile, Freddie Raymer, he's running away with this one. He's in first. Second to Linton Jeffrey. Mike Walter got inside. Newton, he passes him. Logan Wagner trying to tail the tank. Walter there down the front stretch, but slides up a bit. That allows Mike Wagner to duck inside the 69K for position. Both Wagners on the outside looking in. Tight racing there off the four as Logan Wagner drives himself into that fifth and final transfer spot. Mike Wagner, he's going to throw it in on the bottom side on Newton. Newton not going away easily. He keeps the nose right there, but Mike Wagner gets by him. Still in six, though. He needs to get one more spot to transfer in to tonight's feature event through the heat race. Logan Wagner, he goes to the outside of Mike Walter. That's a battle for fourth as Freddie Raymer leads him down the backstretch. He's out to a 2.2 second lead over Linton Jeffrey. So we've got three laps to go this time by. Your top five looks like this with Freddie Raymer leading Linton Jeffrey second, Danny Dietrich in third, Logan Wagner fourth, and Mike Walter in the fifth and final transfer spot. Mike Wagner, he's gonna see if he can reel in that 77. Walter was in a heck of a show at Williams Grove a week ago. Wasn't able to pick up the win, but led for a large majority of that race right up till the final corner when it was stolen away by Anthony Macri, maybe earned away, not stolen, because Macri drove from the 17th starting spot as Logan Wagner. He just got the right rear up into the turn one wall. He's losing some ground. Can he limp this one to a finish? You gotta wonder if that did any damage to the 69K. White flag is out. Mike Walter has gained on Logan Wagner. He's definitely got problems. Logan Wagner is in survival mode for the final lap of this heat race. Walter, he's going to go by the 69K as Freddie Raymer's going to lead him off a of four with a two-second lead and pick up the third heat race win. Finishing second will be the 39 of Linton Jeffrey, third the 48 of Danny Dietrich, fourth the 77 of Mike Walter, and Logan Wagner does survive. He brings it home in fifth. So the third heat race has gone checkers. Freddie Raymer picks up the third heat race win. Finishing second was the 39 of Linton Jeffrey. Third, the 48 of Danny Dietrich. Fourth, the 77 of Mike Walter. And in the fifth and final transfer spot, the 69K of Logan Wagner. Heading to the B main in sixth was the 55 of Mike Wagner. Seventh was the zero of Rick Lafferty. And in eighth was the 66 of Ryan Newton. Heat race number four is brought to you by Penny and Bank. They're the official sponsor of the Kids Money Scramble coming up at the track on August 3rd. Penny and Bank is redefining banking through personal connections and personalized experiences for their customers. And they provide banking and related financial services in your communities. Check them out on the web at pennyin.bank. Fourth and final heat race for the Weikert Livestock 410 Sprint Cars lined up on the front stretch, starting on the pole. 
The driver comes from Allenwood, PA, in the Calvin Excavating Hauk Trucking Wing Dynamics Triple X 33. It's Derek Hauk. And his outside from Ephrata in the Risser Motorsports, the TreeCenter.com, JNS Classics Fleet Reps, car number 45. It's Jeff Halligan. Starting third from Elverson, PA, in the Moose Meadows, Srokoch Contracting, Ames Construction, Charpak Coal and Processing Plant, car number 35. It's Austin Bishop. Rolling off fourth from Mechanicsburg in the Holling Allabach Racing, Orange Crate Brewing Company, Beer Hill Gang, Pilsner 5W. It is Lucas Wolf. Starting fifth out of Sealands Grove in the Creasy Signs, Goff Racing, Sealands Grove Ford, Packers Concessions, Penns Valley Meat Market, car number 12, it's Blaine Heimbach. And starting sixth, this driver comes from Fayetteville, PA, in the Drohan Brick and Hardscaping, Glen Glenville Station Pub and Grub, Shears Welding, Conduit Connections, car number 12 is Lance DeWeese. Inside row number four, starting seventh, the driver comes from Royersford in the Sunny Hill Trucking, TC Transport, Royalton Recycling, Kaufman Financial Group, 17B. It is Steve Buckwalter. Eighth and final starter for the fourth and final heat race comes from Vincent Town, New Jersey. In the Cronenberger Fine Jewelry, Mid-Atlantic Transportation, Red Point Wealth Partners, Pioneer Auto Body, car number 67, it is Justin Whittle. Eight more laps on top of the Bobby Ray Hall scoreboard. Final heat race for the White Livestock 410 Sprint. They are battling for that fourth spot. Those are your top five qualifying cars. Heimbach looks to go inside of Hauk, leaves the top side open, which is where Lance DeWeese is going to go, and he'll go up and around the 12 of Blaine Heimbach. Move him into the fourth spot. Inside of Derek Hauk goes Lance DeWeese. He'll move into third. Good two-for-one opportunity there for Lance DeWeese. Some smoke barreling out of the side of the 17B of Steve Buckwalter right now. Buckwalter, he's on the outside looking at in that sixth spot currently. Needs to get back with Blaine Heimbach to get into the transfer spot. Looks to be okay. Not totally out of the ordinary for a little bit of smoke to be rolling out at this point of the day. I don't think anything terminal happening to the 17B, just some excess fluid in those pipes along the outs or on the inside of the car. Justin Whittle battles with Austin Bishop. They're at the back of the field right now as Lucas Wolf continues to lead. We're halfway through three laps to go in the final heat race. Jeff Halligan in second. He's back by two seconds. Lance DeWeese looking to reel in Halligan. The lap times as they stand right now, Lance DeWeese, the fastest car in this field, running laps at around 18 and a half seconds as it stands. Your leader's running about 18.7 last time around. Lance continues to be the fastest car in this heat race, but we got two laps to go. He'd have to erase a 2.8 second lead to catch up to the leader, but the question is, can he reel in the 45 of Jeff Halligan for that runner-up spot? White flag is out right now here on heat race number four. Jeff Halligan remains in the runner-up spot. Lance DeWeese looks to work the middle bottom side of turns one and two, trying to reel in the 45. Lucas Wolf, though, how about the 5W? Started fourth, got to the lead on lap number one and never looked back. He's going to pick up the checkered flag and win heat race number four. Finishing second is the 45 of Jeff Halligan. Third, the 12 of Lance DeWeese. Fourth, the 33 of Derek Houck. And in fifth, the 12 of Blaine Highbuck. So with that, that completes the Wager Livestock 410 Sprint Car. Heat races, picking up the win was Lucas Wolf. Second, the 45 of Jeff Halligan. Third, the 12 of Lance DeWeese. Fourth, the 33 of Derek Houck. Fifth, the 12 of Blaine Heimbach. Sixth, the 17B of Steve Buckwalter. Seventh, the 67 of Justin Whittle. And in eighth, the 35 of Austin Bishop. Next up will be six heat races for the Penns Valley Meat Market PA Sprint Series Race Saver 305s. So with that, we'll welcome back in Stephanie Dodson for the heat race call.
Thanks a lot, Brad. Like I said, 44 drivers in attendance tonight for the River Valley Builders Pennsylvania Sprint Series, sponsored here at Port Royal Speedway by Penns Valley Meat Market. Also, Penns Valley Meat Market putting up some extra money, $50 to each heat race winner and $100 to the hard charger. Like Brad said, six heat races, eight laps of distance, top three will qualify into tonight's A main event. The top two of those will go to tonight's top 12 redraw. Then we will have two consolation events. On the pole for heat race number one, car number 67, that is Ken Duke Jr., driver out of Seals Grove. In the Fairfield Chevrolet River Valley Builder, Susquehanna Valley Auto Glass number 67. Alongside Duke, your second starter, that is the one R of Christian Rumsey. He hails out of Middletown, New York in the Midnight Auto, Lothers Body Shop, CG Racing Engines, car number 1R. Inside row two, starting third, that's a 17 of Owen Dim, driver out of Mifflin Town in the Ramsey Car Wash, Fishers Heating, AC and Electrical, Bellevue Inn, number 17. Alongside him, your fourth starter, car number 4J, Jake Gamola, driver out of Guy's Mills in the Michael Beechner Contracting Stevenson Equipment, Car number 4J. Inside row three, starting fifth, that's the 88 of Fred Arnold, driver out of Richfield in the Manival Excavating, Kramer Sporting Goods, Leon Landis, Plumbing and Heating, number 88. And alongside Arnold, your sixth starter, car number 53W, that is Jimmy White, driver out of Mount Union in the Rogers Auto Repair, Locust Hill Custom Butcher Shop, Hot Shop, Powder Coating and Sandblasting, number 53W. Inside the fourth and final row, starting seventh, that's a two of Aaron Statler, driver out of Carlisle in her fine line, Auto Body, Beverage Express, Schultz Performance, number two, and bringing up the rear, your eighth starter, that is the 5W rookie of Colby Weaver, driver out of Everett in the BR Outdoors, KL Weaver Trucking, r &N Tires, number 5W. The pole sitter, car number 67 of Ken Duke Jr. Two-time PA Sprint Series champion, the 2019 national champion, former track champion here at Port Royal Speedway. He has 22 PA Sprint Series, not counting those in other neighboring race saver divisions. Alongside him, the 1R of Christian Rumsey. Again, his son Waylon was born four months ago here at the Speedway. His dad, Christian, starts outside row number one. Owen Dim, Jake Gamola, row two, Fred Arnold, Jimmy White, row three, Aaron Statler, Colby Weaver round out the field. Three cars will qualify top two to the redraw. Side by side at the line, Ken Duke Jr., Christian Rumsey were green. 4J, Jake Gamola looks to the outside. Meanwhile, your top two cars drag race into turn number one. Colby Weaver, rookie to the extreme top side. Here comes Fred Arnold. Car number 88 into that fifth spot. Meanwhile, battle for the lead. One R Christian Rumsey sticks a nose under 67 at Ken Duke Jr. Duke Jr. leads off of turn number four. Owen Dim around the outside of Jake Gamola. Owen Dim into that third spot. As he now sets his sights on the one R of Christian Rumsey off of turn number two as they race down the back stretch. Owen Dim to the outside. Meanwhile, Ken Duke Jr. leading off at turn number four. Move Owen Dim to the lead here on lap number two. Owen Dim into second. Ken Duke Jr., sorry, still leading. Move Owen Dim into second on lap number two. Rookie Colby Weaver, 5W, making contact with the outside wall with that right rear. He was preferring that high line. Meanwhile, we're going to see cross flags this time by 67 of Ken Duke Jr. Leading by over a second to the 17 of Owen Dim. Christian Rumsey in third. Jacob Mola on the outside looking in in that fourth position. 
Fred Arnold fifth, Aaron Statler sixth, Jimmy White seventh, and Colby Weaver eighth. Owen oh, Dim unable to break into Ken Duke's lead. Duke extending his lead here as they come around turn number four. Two laps to go this time by. Ken Duke Jr. one and a half seconds ahead of the 17 of Owen Dim. Jacob Mola trying to reel in Christian Rumsey off at of turn number four. Rumsey in that third and final transfer spot. White flag out on the speedway as Ken Duke Jr. leads him off at of turn number two. Picking up the checkered and heat race number one and an extra $50 thanks to Penn's Valley Meat Market. That is the 67 of Ken Duke Jr. Followed by the 17 of Owen Dim and Christian Rumsey in the third transfer spot. Picking up the victory in heat race number one, the 67 of Ken Duke Jr. by two seconds over the 17 of Owen Dim. Also qualifying in third, the 1R of Christian Rumsey. To the B main in fourth, the 4J of Jacob Mola. In fifth, the 88 of Fred Arnold. In sixth, the 2 of Aaron Statler. In seventh, the 5W of Colby Weaver. And in eighth, the 53W of Jimmy White. Again, thanks to Penn's Valley Meat Market. An extra $50 going to Ken Duke Jr. We're getting ready for heat race number two. On the pole, car number 89, that is Nick Swigert, driver out of Myerstown in the Williams Racing, Devin Freeze Home Improvements, Matt Brown Trucking, number 89. Alongside Swigert, your second starter, that is the 32 of Ethan Basem, driver out of Mifflin Town. Ran a handful of races in 2023. He's sponsored by Paul Davis Restoration of Susquehanna Valley, Flickinger's Paws and Claws Grooming, Weave and Steve Barbecue, number 32B. Inside row two, starting third, that is the 4W of Casey Weaver, Casey Hales out of Everett in the KL Weaver Trucking MT4 Trucking Pro Paint Customs number 4W. Alongside Weaver, your fourth starter, car number 47. That is Ben Miklos, driver out of Camp Hill. In the Miklos Motorsports Best Wash Hurley's Heat number 47. Inside row three, starting fifth, that is the J9 of Gerald Harris, driver out of Dayton, Virginia, and the Bobby Harris Moving number J9. Alongside him, your sixth starter, car number 21, that is Andrew Boyer out of Port Royal. In the Terror Farm, Farmer's Choice Tires, TC Designs, car number 21, driving in loving memory of William Baum. Inside, your fourth and final row, starting 17th, that's a 19K of Chris Kreider. Chris out of Middleburg in the Storage Sense Junior out of Concrete, Keller Auto Body, number 19K, and alongside him, car number 19A, rookie Alan Rhodes, driver out of Belleville. In the Rays Energy Amsoil Renegade Fuels, car number 19A. Again, we want to thank the PA Game Commission for boosting our purse today. The PA Sprint Series is committed to a fair purse structure in which the 24th finisher receives half of the winner's amount. Tonight, the winner receives $1,000, last place $500. The goal is to support budget racers and to keep more drivers on the track. It also creates a culture of mutual respect and allows drivers to experience tough competition and the thrill of sprint car racing without the cutthroat environment involved with tons of money being on the line. If you want to learn more about us, check us out at PASprintSeries.com or on our Facebook. Pole sitter, car number 89 of Nick Swigert. He is actually a previous Keystone Race Saver Challenge winner. Again, Nick Swigert and car number 89, driver out of Myerstown. He also has nine wins with the PA Sprint Series. 
He's at the top of the win list here at the Speedway for our division with five wins here at the track. Alongside him, the 32B of Ethan Basem in just his second season has a handful of races. Row number two, Casey Weaver, Ben Miklos, row three, Gerald Harris, Andrew Boyer. Row four, Chris Kreider and Allen Rhodes. Again, eight laps is the distance. Top three drivers will qualify. Chris Kreider, unfortunately, not able to make the call. Going green at the line, side by side, Swagger Beesum. Even start as a drag race down the front stretch. Nick Swigert into the early lead. Drivers jockeying position off of turn number two. Basem in second, Weaver third. The 21 Andrew Boyer currently in fourth. Remember three drivers will qualify. Nick Swigert leads lap number one. Battle for second shaping up between Ethan Basem and Casey Weaver as they head into turn number three. Weaver looks to the outside. Makes the pass for second. Meanwhile, Nick Swigert leads by over two seconds as he races through turn two. Nick Swigert leading over Casey Weaver, Ethan Basem, and just outside of the qualifying mark, the 21 of Andrew Boyer. Gerald Harris, a driver from Virginia, in fifth. Ben Miklos and Alan Rhodes rounding out the field. Nick Swaggart found great success with the PA Sprint Series. Then he took some time off to try some other divisions and he came back mid-2023 racing for Williams Racing. We're at the halfway mark in heat race number two. He continues to extend his lead to two and three quarter seconds over the 4W of Casey Weaver. Now Gerald Harris looks underneath the 21 of Andrew Boyer, battle for fourth on the backstretch. Your leader in turn number three continues to extend his lead. Nick Swigert going to see two laps to go this time by. He was a 2019 Keystone Race Saver Challenge winner. He also won the Founders Non-Qualifier race in 2021. Battle for fourth continues between Andrew Boyer and Gerald Harris. Meanwhile, Nick Swigert taking the white flag three and a half seconds ahead of Casey Weaver in second. He's coming around turn three and four for the final time. Picking up the checkered in heat race number two, the 89 and Nick Swigert finishing in second. The 4W of Casey Weaver, also qualifying in third, 32B of Ethan Basem. Gerald Harris picked up that fourth spot right on that last lap. Your winner of heat race number two, the 89 and Nick Swagger by four seconds over the 4W of Casey Weaver. Also qualifying in third, the 32B of Ethan Basem. In fourth on that final lap, the J9 of Gerald Harris. In fifth, the 21 of Andrew Boyer. In sixth, the 47 of Ben Miklos. In seventh, the 19A of Alan Rhodes. Unfortunately not making it out for that heat race, the 19K of Chris Kreider. Steph, want to hop in here a second. We have a little giveaway to do. We have an, uh, a sweatshirt to give away. So fans, pay attention here. We got a little trivia question for you. So we didn't get to run the Blue Collar Classic through Keystone Race Saver Challenge in 2023. So the trivia question is, and we've made mention of it tonight, but who won the event in 2022? Who's the guaranteed starter? Uh, if they don't qualify through on their own for tonight's Keystone Race Saver Challenge. 
If you know the answer, come on up to the press box. I'll meet with you. If you get the answer right, we'll give you the sweatshirt we have up for grabs. But, Steph, I'll give it back to you here. Thanks a lot. Again, that's the winner of the Founders Cup we're looking for. Yeah, we're looking for the winner of the Founders Cup. That's the one who has the guaranteed starting spot. So the, we're looking again for the winner of the 2022 Founders Cup who's got a guaranteed start in this year as well, the makeup feature of 2023. All right, we're getting ready for heat race number three. On the pole, that's car number 19. That is Cruz Kepner. Cruz hails out of Creamer in the Goods Construction, Hilltop Lawn Care, SNL Creamer Trucking, number 19. Alongside him, that's a five of Logan Spar. Logan out of Lewisbury in the KR McDonald Incorporated High Tech Metals RL Snyder Electric, number five. Inside row two, starting third, that's a 19B of Danny Buckafusca, driver out of Rockaway, New Jersey, in the Fairmount Services, Brian Drilling, Hoffman Supply, number 19B. Alongside him, your fourth starter, car number 25, that is Dustin Young, driver out of Danville, in the HPC Construction Earthwork Services Key Trucking number 25. Inside row three, starting fifth, that's a 34 of Austin Reed, driver out of Edders. In the White Tails Down, Karma Industrial Services, DMM Transportation Max Staff, car number 34. Alongside him, your sixth starter, that's a 98 of Croy Basem, driver out of Mifflin Town. In the LaSalle Engine and Chassis, Laurel Rock Farms, Truck Stuff and More, number 98. And bringing up the rear, your seventh starter, car number 12, that's Roger Irvine, driver out of Irvona. In the UMI Performance, JJ Speed Shop, Bungo's Tires, number 12. Update on that poll, it was the 52 of Jeff Weaver who did win the 2022 Founders Cup here uh, at the Keystone Race Saver Challenge. So thank you for your answers and your participation. Cruz Kepner, your poll sitter. He's been a regular since 2019. He's got two wins with the Pennsylvania Sprint Series. His best finish here at the Speedway is a second. Alongside him, the five of Logan Spar. Logan was last year's track champion, our series champion. He's got four wins here at the Speedway. Holds the record for the most consecutive wins of six with our series. Inside row two, that's a 19B of Danny Buckafusca. He was a regular at Big Diamond Speedway. A multi-time crate mod winner there. It's only his second season in Race Saver, driving for Neil Brothers Racing. Dustin Young alongside him. Car number 25 has a best finish of second here at Port Royal Speedway. Austin Reed and Croy Basem, Croy's brother just finished third in the last heat race in row number three and bringing up the rear. 20 year veteran, the 12 of Roger Irvine. We're gonna go green this time, slow and steady, top three to qualify. Yeah, that's what I thought. Flagman not liking that start, so we're calling that one back. We're going to try this again. Austin Reed, our fifth starter here. He has seven wins, none here at Port Royal Speedway. He has a best of second, so he's looking for his first win here. He finished third in our 23 points. It's so a 34 of Austin Reed. We have lots of tough competition here this evening for the 2023 Makeup Keystone Race Saver Challenge. The top nine in Port Royal Speedway points are here, along with former winners at the Speedway like Kenny Hefner, Landon Price, and Drew Young. 
Also, Nick Swigert, a previous Keystone Race Saver Challenge winner, along with the PA State champion, Timmy Bittner, and the second finisher in the Allegheny Sprint Tour points, Jake Gamola. We're going to give this heat race another try. Cruz Kepner, Logan Spar, bringing them to the green. Extremely slow start there as take the green down the front stretch. Cruz Kepner leads them into turn one. Dustin Young to the outside of Logan Spar. Logan Spar is going to battle back side by side down the back stretch. Remember, top three qualify. Here comes Austin Reed. He's looking in three wide off of turn number four. Cruz Kepner on the bottom slides up in front. He maintains the lead for lap number one. Logan Spar, the meat of that sandwich. Meanwhile, the 25 of Dustin Young on the top side. Head down the back stretch the way they entered, but here comes Logan Spar, dives underneath Cruz Kepner for the lead. Dustin Young looks to the outside. 34 of Austin Reed in that fourth spot looks on. Danny Buckafusca in fifth. Roger Irvine, sixth. Croy Basum, seventh. 19 of Cruz Kepner, Dustin Young battling off a of turn number two. Kepner now into that third position. Here comes Austin Reed into the mix, car number 34. Logan Spar leading by 1.2 seconds over that mix of three drivers. Dustin Young to the top side, strong second place run off of the turn two. Austin Reed looks to the outside of the 19 of Cruz Kepner. Move Austin Reed into third into that final transfer spot. Meanwhile, Cruz Kepner trying to not let him get too far out of his sights. We are halfway through heat race number three. Austin Reed closes in on the 25 of Dustin Young as Dustin slides up the speedway. Meanwhile, Logan Spar leading by over a second and a half to the 25 of Dustin Young. Austin Reed and Dustin Young pitted side pitted next to each other in the pit area, close to each other on the speedway as well. Just a car length separate them as drivers are getting the two to go sign this time by. Danny Buckafusca and Roger Irvine battling it out. Roger Irvine moves into that fifth spot, move Danny Buckafusca into sixth. 25 of Dustin Young off the pace going into turn number three. He slows tremendously. Ducks to the inside of the speedway. Meanwhile, drivers seeing the white flag. Caution is out on the speedway as a 25 of Dustin Young off the pace. Tough break for Dustin Young. He was running in that second spot. He started fourth in today's heat race, was running second, had a really strong start. Driver out of Danville in his fifth season. When Dustin Young started racing, he was a rookie to racing in general. Has made great gains over the seasons. Has the best finish of second here at Port, and he started fourth in this heat race, blasted into second, and unfortunately comes to a stop here on the speedway while in a qualifying position. That now moves the 19 of Cruz Kepner into the third transfer spot. Logan Spar leading over the 34 of Austin Reed who started in that fifth position, followed by Cruz Kepner in third, Roger Irvine in fourth, Danny Buckafusca in fifth, and Croy Basum in sixth. Lights out on the speedway. We're going to have a one-lap shootout to the checkered flag. Austin Reed getting a strong start behind the five of Logan Spar. He ducks to the inside. They drag race off a of turn two. Austin Reed able to make that bottom line stick for him. Meanwhile, here comes Roger Irvine. Battle for the third and final transfer position. Logan Spar and Austin Reed getting together, collecting each other, spinning out caution on the speedway.
Tough break for two top runners in the Pennsylvania Sprint Series. You see the five of Logan Spar and the 34 of Austin Reed sitting up there in turns three and four. Both drivers in qualifying position battle for that lead happening there on the last lap. Logan Spar, driver out of Lewisbury. He actually won this event last year, Keystone Race Saver Challenge. Austin Reed, car number 34. He finished third in our point series. A replay for those of you watching on Flow. Austin Reed down on the inside, able to make it stick, but it looked like he made contact with the inside bottom wall and then that darted him in front of the five or into the five of Logan Spar. Just some hard racing there. Another replay for those following on flow. Austin Reed did catch something on the inside there. Looked like it could have been the inside wall of the speedway and it just bumped him out enough to make contact with the five. These two are tough competitors. I don't think there was anything intentional but what a tough break for those two drivers. While I'm thinking of it and enjoying some meat and cheese from the Penns Valley Meat Market, I just wanted to thank Frost Byerly from Penns Valley for his sponsorship of the Port Royal Speedway Points Chase here at the Speedway for the PA Sprint Series. Check out their weekly specials on Facebook at Penns Valley Meat Market, or better yet, visit them in person on East Main Street in Milheim. You will not be disappointed. Again, they sponsor our season-long points chase here at the Speedway. They also sponsor $100 every time we're here to the Hard Charger. And tonight, Penns Valley putting up an extra $50 to all of our heat race winners. We also want to thank River Valley Builders for sponsoring Pennsylvania Sprint Series points season points chase. River Valley Builders is Susquehanna Valley's premier modular home builder. Their goal is to get to know their homeowners, understand their lifestyles, their needs, and translate those into a dream home for life. From floor plans to finishing touches, they're there every step of the way. Check them out at rivervalleybuild.com. Accident almost cleared up there. Again, we would just want to thank our safety officials and all of the crew here at the Speedway for getting that cleaned up quickly and checking on our driver's safety. As far as I know, all drivers were okay in that incident. So we're thankful for that. We're just at a one lap shootout here with Cruz Kepner now inheriting the lead over the 12 of Roger Irvine and then the 19 of Danny Buccafusca. Again, if you are know anything about the modified world, Danny is a big name. I think he's at the top of the win list at Big Diamond for the Crate Modified division. He made the switch to sprints last season. He was doing double duty and now fully sprint car. Yeah. 
Lights out on the speedway. We're going to go green this time. Seems like Cruz prefers those slow starts as he heads into turn number one. Here comes a 12 of Roger Irvine. Irvine is with us in, for 20 years. Irvine goes to the inside. Again, this is the battle for the lead. Both drivers are in the top 12 redraw at the moment. Picking up heat race number three victory. The 19 of Cruz Kepner over the 12 of Roger Irvine. Oh, something wrong. Sorry about that, race fans. We're getting ready for heat race number four. On the pole, car number 31, that is Zach Rhodes, driver out of McVeigh Town. In the Weaver Racing Renegade Race Fuels, Ray's Energy Drinks number 31. Alongside him, supposed to be starting second, is the 11W of Donnie Wise, driver out of Middletown but I'm hearing that Donnie's electing to start at the tail as he's having some mechanical issues. He's sponsored by DW Motorsports M&J Concrete Coatings. Whose designs? That's the 11W of Donnie Wise. Starting third, inside a row number two, that's a 36 of Mike Malaire, driver out of Warrington in the bath fitter, college hunks moving and hauling, number 36. Alongside him, Fourth starter, that's a 99 of A.J. Barton, driver out of Bedford. He was last year's Rookie of the Year for the Pennsylvania Sprint Series. Sponsored by Lepley's Plumbing and Baker's Body Shop, car number 99 of A.J. Barton. Inside row three, starting fifth, that's a 0-1 of Timmy Bittner. Timmy Bittner, driver out of Beach Creek. Sponsored by Klein's Auto Sales, Joseph C. Hazel, GP Cabinets, number 01. Alongside him, your sixth starter, car number 20, that is Doug Dodson, driver out of Middletown. In the Power Mist Racing Fuels, Down East Granite, Crockett Log Holmes, number 20. And bringing up the rear, starting seventh in row number four. That is a 10 of Nathan Pierce, driver out of Troy. Sponsored by Charlie Litweiler, Aerial System Support, and Siemens Energy, car number 10 of Nathan Pierce. Pole sitter in this heat race, finished second in the PA Sprint Series points last year. He has three wins, one of which is here at the Speedway. Also on the inside row, starting fifth, the 0-1 of Timmy Bittner. He always brings the biggest fan club. He was a 2023 Pennsylvania State Champion, Clayton County Speedway Champion, and he's still looking for his first PA Sprint Series victory. Alongside him, car number 20, Doug Dodson in his sixth season. He's got eight career wins. Looking to add more to his resume as one of those are here at Port Royal Speedway. Again, that outside row moving up as the 11W of Donnie Wise opting to start at the tail of the field. That moves the number 99 of A.J. Barton in just his second season to the outside of row number one. Driver out of Bedford, 99 of A.J. Barton. A.J. Barton came to our 2023 banquet, not expecting to get anything, and was pleasantly surprised when he was awarded the Rookie of the Year Award.
Zach Rhodes, your pole sitter, having found great success with Roger Weaver, the car owner of that machine. Zach Rhodes, A.J. Barton, row one. Mike Malair, Doug Dodson, row two. Timmy Bittner, Nathan Pierce, row four. Followed by the 11W of Donnie Wise, eight laps of distance, we're going green. Twenty of Dodson dumps to the inside of the 99 of AJ Barton. Barton tries to battle back on the inside. Check out the 01 of Timmy Bittner on the outside of the 10 of Nathan Pierce. Meanwhile, leading the 31 of Zach Rhodes. Here comes the 36 of Mike Malaire trying to catch up to the outside of the 99 of Barton. Meanwhile, Barton will be in third here at lap number one. Zach Rhodes followed by Dodson. Here comes Malaire to the inside of Barton, move Malaire into that third qualifying spot, but A.J. Barton not letting him get too far away. Zach Rhodes continues to lead here at lap number two. Meanwhile, Timmy Bittner and Nathan Pierce having a battle for the fifth position. Caution out on the speedway. Caution out on the speedway here, lap two, six laps to go. I think the 11W, Donnie Wise, might have gotten a little out of shape, bringing out the caution there. This bunches up the field. Zach Rhodes, Doug Dodson, Mike Malair in qualifying positions, followed by A.J. Barton in fourth, Nathan Pierce fifth, Timmy Bittner sixth, and Donnie Wise seventh. Single file to the cone, can't pass to lay past the cone. Fast restart for the 31Z of Zach Rhodes. Mike Malaire to the top side, 99 of Barton, tries to catch him on the bottom side. Zach Rhodes having a strong start over the 20 of Dodson. Here comes the 36 of Mike Malaire, closing in on the 20 of Dodson. Zach Rhodes smooth and fast out front. Now we have a slowing car here of Timmy Bittner in turn number one. He's able to duck it into the infield. Green flag stays out. Timmy Bittner no longer in competition in heat race number four. We're halfway through this heat race. Zach Rhodes continues to lead now by one and three quarter seconds over the 20 of Dodson. Mike Malaire still in a strong third place followed by the 99 of AJ Barton. Zach Rhodes in that 19 second lap bracket. Donnie Wise, car number 11W. Heard a lot of popping noises as he's now off speed. Caution light out for the 11W of Donnie Wise sitting off of turn number two as he rolls to a stop. Six laps down, two laps remain here in heat race number four. I'm not sure if anybody has anything for Zach Rhodes. Almost three seconds ahead of the 20 of Doug Dodson.
during this caution. I was looking back through all the times, and so far, Zach Rhodes has the fastest time of anyone during these heat races in the 19-second bracket. We have two laps to go here in heat race number four. Dodson tries a top side, able to close in on the 31 of Zach Rose as they go down the back stretch into turn number three. Dodson found some speed there on that line as Rose slides up in front of him. Drivers can see the white flag this time by. Dodson applying some pressure to the 31Z of Zach Rhodes. Rhodes now about two car lengths ahead as they head down the back stretch. Meanwhile, the 99 of AJ Barton remains in third. Coming around for the checker in heat race number four. Picking up the victory, the 31Z of Zach Rhodes over the 20 of Doug Dodson and the 99 of AJ Barton. Zach Rhodes, again, your winner in heat race number four, picking up that extra cash from Penns Valley Meat Market in second, the 20 of Doug Dodson. In third, the 99 of AJ Barton. To the B main in fourth, the 36 of Mike Malaire. In fifth, the 10 of Nathan Pierce not finishing. The 11 W of Donnie Wise and the 0 1 of Timmy Bittner. Getting ready for the fifth of six heat races for the River Valley Builders Pennsylvania Sprint Series, sponsored here by Penns Valley Meat Market on the pole. Car number 25G, that is Nolan Groves, driver out of Sugar Grove. And the P. Beetle Construction Cartworks, Travis Harry Racing Engines, number 25G. Alongside Groves, your second starter, the winner of the 2022 Founders Cup.